when Canada stunned the world by stepping back from the F-35 program, few understood the full magnitude of what had just happened. The United States' most advanced stealth jet sidelined. In its place, a Swedish fighter known more for agility than stealth, the Saab Gripen E. But behind this seemingly simple choice lies a story of sovereignty, politics, and quiet rebellion against U.S. defense dominance. What drove Ottawa to risk tension with its biggest ally? Why did the Gripen suddenly become the weapon of choice? And what shocking role is this jet destined to play in the years ahead? Let's find out. Canada's fighter jet replacement saga has dragged on for over a decade, full of politics, budget battles, and broken promises. But in 2025, the story took a dramatic turn. After years of delays and ballooning costs, Ottawa decided to reevaluate its F-35 commitment, shocking Washington and NATO alike. The surprising frontrunner, Saab's Gripen E, a jet once dismissed as a lightweight underdog. Why this sudden shift? The answer lies deep inside the engines, factories, and geopolitical chessboard that shaped the future of air power. This is the real reason Canada chose Gripen and what it means for the balance of power ahead. When Ottawa first committed to the F-35 program, the deal promised everything. Fifth generation stealth, digital battlefield connectivity, and seamless integration with US forces. Canada would be part of the world's most elite fighter network. But as the years rolled on, the dream blurred into controversy. Maintenance costs spiraled. The F-35's per hour flight cost hovered around 45,000 US dollars, compared to Gripen's $8,000. Software updates were delayed. Even US squadrons struggled with readiness rates under 60%. For Canada, that meant operational risk and a drain on defense budgets already stretched by Arctic patrols and naval modernization. More troubling, the F-35's engines, built by Pratt and Whitney US, created total dependence on American supply chains. Every major repair, every part, every software tweak required US approval. For a country that prides itself on sovereignty, that dependency was unacceptable. By 2025, Canada quietly reopened the file. While the F-35 captured headlines, Sweden Saab kept perfecting the Gripen E, a fighter built around one simple idea, independence. The Gripen can be refueled and rearmed by six technicians in 10 minutes. It can take off from a 900-meter stretch of highway, operate in sub-zero Arctic conditions, and costs one-third of the F-35 to fly. For a country like Canada, vast, cold, and sparsely populated, that practicality is gold. More importantly, the Gripen E isn't just a fighter, it's a platform. It allows open architecture software, letting Canada integrate its own systems, weapons, and even sensors without U.S. approval. It's modular, upgradable, and future-ready, meaning Canada can evolve it over decades instead of waiting for foreign contractors. Behind the scenes, a new alliance was forming. Rolls-Royce Canada, a subsidiary of the British aerospace giant, quietly stepped forward with a proposal build propulsion and maintenance infrastructure for Canada's future fighter fleet, right here in Canada. That offer changed everything. Up to this point, even Saab's Gripen relied on GE's F-414 engine, another American product. With Rolls-Royce's support, Canada saw a path to true industrial sovereignty, a Canadian-based supply chain for maintenance, overhaul, and potentially future propulsion upgrades. The move meant thousands of jobs, billions in local contracts, and reduced dependence on U.S. export controls. In a world where wars and sanctions can halt spare parts overnight, that independence isn't luxury, it's survival. The F-35 program poured billions into U.S. factories, leaving Canada with limited industrial return. Canadian firms fought for tiny subcontracts while the major profits stayed abroad. Saab's offer flipped that script. Under its 2025 proposal, Gripen E airframes would be assembled in Canada with Bombardier, Magellan, and Rolls-Royce providing core systems integration. It's estimated to generate 10,000 high-tech jobs and inject over 15 billion Canadian dollars into the domestic economy over two decades. That's not just a purchase, it's a national investment. Local production also means training Canadian engineers in combat aviation, 
skills that build the foundation for future drone and space technologies. In simple terms, Gripen turns Canada from a buyer into a builder. When news of Canada's pivot leaked, Washington was not pleased. For the U.S., the F-35 is more than a fighter. It's a strategic binding tool for allies. Every F-35 user relies on American software networks, data links, and engine parts. By choosing Gripen, Canada signaled the desire to stand more independent and to forge stronger ties with Europe. Sweden and the UK immediately welcomed the decision. It opened doors for joint training, shared production, and possibly a seat for Canada in Europe's Tempest 6 generation fighter program, led by the UK, Italy, and Japan. Analysts called it the great rebalancing of the North. For the first time since World War II, Canada was positioning itself as a bridge between US and European defense industries, not just a junior partner. Gripen E was born for the Arctic, designed to operate in Sweden's harsh winters. Its systems are optimized for freezing conditions. Its electronic warfare suite, EWS-39, is among the best in the world, allowing it to detect and jam enemy radar in real time. For Canada's Arctic patrol missions, these features are critical. The Gripen can deploy to remote airstrips in Nunavut or the Yukon without requiring massive infrastructure. It can share targeting data with AWACS aircraft and naval ships and return home on half the fuel of an F-35. The jet's powerful Celex ES-05 Raven radar provides 360-degree coverage and long-range detection in polar environments where GPS signals often fail. For Arctic defense, where survivability and range matter more than stealth, Gripen offers a perfect balance of speed, range, and adaptability. One of the most understated reasons behind Canada's choice is software freedom. The F-35 is a digital black box. Only the U.S. controls its source code. If Canada wants to add new weapons or tweak systems, it must request permission through Washington. Gripen E, on the other hand, is built on open architecture. It allows customization, meaning Canada can load its own weapons, AI-aided targeting, and electronic warfare algorithms without foreign approval. That level of control is rare in modern defense procurement. It ensures Canada can adapt the jet to its unique needs, from Arctic interception to NATO missions in Europe, without bureaucratic delays. Every fighter program creates an industrial ripple. The Gripen's local assembly means Canadian companies will supply avionics, composites, landing gear, and engine components for decades. The economic impact extends to education too. Saab and Rolls-Royce have both proposed funding scholarships for STEM programs at Canadian universities, a move that would train the next generation of aerospace engineers. That feeds directly into Canada's ambition to develop domestic defense innovation, something it lost after the cancellation of the Avro Aero project in 1959. The Gripen program could be Canada's second chance to reclaim that legacy. No decision of this magnitude comes without risks. Critics warn that operating a non-NATO standard fighter might complicate joint missions and interoperability. Others point out that the F-35 stealth and sensor fusion remain unequaled. Canada may gain independence, but it could lose some of the networked advantages the U.S. offers. Then there's the political dimension. Choosing Gripen means balancing alliances carefully. Ottawa must convince Washington that this isn't a snub but a strategic diversification that ultimately strengthens North American security. Still, even U.S. analysts admit that a diverse fleet can add resilience to NATO operations. If the F-35 network is ever compromised, Gripen's independent systems could provide a vital backup node. Here's where the story takes a turn. Insiders suggest Canada's Gripens won't just replace aging fighters. They'll form the backbone of a new continental defense doctrine. The plan? To build a multi-layered defense network linking Canadian Gripens, British Tempest Research Labs, and Swedish Data Integration Systems, creating a mini-air defense alliance within NATO. That means Canada could operate as the testbed for next-generation AI-assisted combat systems developed in Europe, giving it a technological edge and a role far beyond its traditional size. The Gripen E is set to be the bridge fighter that connects Canada's current Air Force to the future Tempest platform, 
potentially a sixth generation aircraft built with Canada as a partner nation. That's the shocking truth. The Gripen isn't Canada's fallback. It's its launch pad to the next era of air power. The Canadian public, once skeptical of costly fighter deals, has responded surprisingly well. Polls show majority support for the Gripen because of its local benefits and economic impact. Within the Royal Canadian Air Force, pilots appreciate the Gripen's simplicity and adaptability. It offers advanced fly-by-wire controls, excellent visibility, and cutting-edge data links that integrate seamlessly with ground and naval units. One RCAF test pilot was quoted saying, the Gripen feels like a fighter designed for our country, not one we're renting from someone else. That sentiment, ownership, captures the entire story. On the global stage, Canada's choice is symbolic. It represents a small but significant shift in the global defense market, a rebalancing of power away from a single superpower toward a multipolar defense ecosystem. It tells the world that alliances are not contracts of obedience, they're partnerships of equals. By choosing Gripen, Canada has shown that advanced nations can still choose independence without isolation. And that may be the most powerful message of all. Canada's decision to embrace the Gripen marks a turning point in modern air strategy. It a rejection of dependency and a renewal of sovereignty. It balances defense capability with economic growth and technological freedom. The Gripen is not just a jet, it's a statement. A statement that Canada intends to chart its own course in a world of increasing uncertainty. With Rolls-Royce powering its industry and Saab sharing its blueprints, Canada has become the unlikely pioneer of a new defense era, one where innovation and independence take flight together. This isn't the end of Canada's fighter story. It's the beginning of something far bigger. If you enjoy deep dives like this one, uncovering the real truth behind global military decisions, hit the like button, subscribe to Military Power Play, and turn on notifications bell so you never miss the next major story shaping global power. What do you think? Was Canada right to choose Gripen over the F-35? Let's debate below. I read every comment.